I want to talk about the power. Why, why is identity so powerful? And there's elements of identity I want to kind of break down. And for us, um, I'm going to use uh, an illustration, just a visual for us, just so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, I've got a little light to help from the first service. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the makeup of our identities. And we just start with what's called the identity that's given. This is identity that's given, uh, given to us uh, through lots of different uh, reasons. There's identity given, which actually still has a big part. It influences us. Do you have that for me? Identity given? There you go. It influences us, right? So identity given influences. What I mean by that? Well, oftentimes there could be something in your life that's very, uh, that you remember a fracture in your life uh, where something broke, okay? So it could be, it doesn't matter what it is, but a lot of times it's usually negative. There could be something in your life that whether it was abuse, uh, it was parents, it was a situation with friends or loved ones or, or whatever the case is, that there is something that kind of breaks, uh, breaks in you. And those fractures and breaks and scars are part of the identity given us because of circumstances, because of our past, because of the things that do influence, they do influence us. The other thing that I know happens too is that there is identity given in terms of the labels we call them labels. I think that'd be the best way to describe it. Labels given to us. So I'll give you a few labels that kind of describe things, right? So you could be a sports, you know, a sports person, right? And I don't want to just, it's not football season. Let's do baseball. Baseball is another good one. You, you could be a sports person. Um, maybe that's something uh, that identifies you. You know, maybe you're an outdoorsy, uh, let's do the camper. Let's do the camper. How about that? Maybe you're a, maybe you're an outdoorsy kind of person. Kelly is not. She's in the front row. That's not her, right? outdoorsy person. Maybe you're an outdoorsy person. Maybe you're an executive. Maybe, and these are all just things that kind of label on us. Maybe uh, you just had a family. So now family is a big deal. You know, family's a a big label uh, for your life. Uh, Many of you, you know, when, when, I mean, we just had Mother's Day. Uh, Being a mother is a big, big kind of identity given uh, to us. Let me put that across here. There we go. Um, Mother's an identity. Maybe it's just your personality. You know, maybe you're the life of the party. You know, maybe everybody just says, you know, you're the guy that smiles. Um, you know, you, this is the person I call when I'm sad. Uh, they bring me joy, you know. There's a lot of labels given to us, so it's still part of our identity given. It's still part of the things that influence, uh, influence us. There's also for us this identity given through the emotional way we communicate, okay? So there's a lot of, you know, there's emotion involved, so I'll put this somewhere. This is a, let me do a heart here. So uh, the way in which you care about things, you know, your compassion Maybe your heart is huge. Um, maybe it's big. Maybe it's small, like the Grinch. Anybody remember the Grinch? The Grinch's heart, right? Maybe it's small. Maybe you, you know, it, but it's still a part of who you are, and it kind of describes your uh, emotional state. So there's a there's a big part of that there. Um, maybe it's how you emotionally connect. And so one way, again, you saw that from my my um, my thing. The one way that we emotionally connect, I can I connect through music. So I love I love music. Let's put music up here, right? Um, maybe it's the arts, you know, maybe it's the arts that you connect through. Maybe it's, um, uh, intellectual arts, you know, maybe it's study, but there's still an emotional way that kind of describes you and connects you, um, with others. And then of course there's, there's you, right? There's you and your friends, um, the people that are, that are connected in your life. Let me find a good spot for this. I feel like Bob Ross right now. Look at the little tree. Look at the little tree over here. You know, let's put a little smiley face over here. So, there's a way in which you are maybe, uh, maybe introverted. Maybe you're the, maybe you like deep, uh, deep conversations and relationships. You know, maybe you're the life of the party. But either way, there's some element about you in terms of your identity given that is a part of how you emotionally connect uh, with others around you. And, and all these things, I just want you to know, all these things kind of, again, understand they do influence who we are. They really do. I love, I love this one. I saved this one for last. This is, my, uh, this is my Christian uh, influence, right? So I got my big Jesus Saves sticker. Where can I put that? I'm going to put it right over here. How about that? Big Jesus Saves. Here we go. All right. They all influence who we are. This is a part of our identity given. Whether it's a label, whether it's a past experience, whether it's a part of how you emotionally connect and your emotional language, that's all there. But there's a big difference as well between the identity given and an identity received. The identity received is something that defines us. So no longer is it just an identity given. Not only is it just something that's given to us kind of on the external, 
but it's something that defines us. It's what we believe is really true at our core. And as you can see, hopefully you can see it, it really does make a larger change. It's the more powerful of the characteristics of our identity. Not, not that, again, these things don't influence us. They're still there. But when you begin to understand who you, when you really believe at a core, when you have things that align and support who you really are and what you believe is true about you, that becomes your identity received. You receive that. You embrace it. You believe it's true. And this is so powerful. Let me just give you some examples. Um, maybe some of you guys have this in your family or in, in past relationships, or maybe you've had somebody who's struggled with addiction. And there are physical and, and, and very physical and mental things that deal with addiction, and I'm not talking about necessarily the, the, the counseling or the program or the detox or things that have to happen uh, when it comes to addiction, but maybe you've dealt with somebody who deals with addictions, and they have for years and years and years and years, they just can't shake it. They've tried, they've tried, they've tried, they've tried tons of avenues, but they can't seem to shake it. Well, the reality is more than likely that something about that addiction, something about that piece of them is not just something that's happened to them and that they're involved in and do. This is something that they believe is true about themselves. This is an identity that they've received. I don't know if you've ever dealt with somebody who's struggled with security, right? If you ever know anybody that struggles, they're insecure. They're, there's just this natural insecurity about themselves. And you might know them and you might look at them and be like, look, you're the most awesome person I've ever known. Like you, there's, you might even excel at something, but for some reason, when you get into conversation, you begin to know them. Maybe they're a close friend or somebody in your family. You, you realize that they are so insecure that there is probably, again, more than likely that, that even though they might excel at things, they have some great labels and identities given to them, but at their core, their identity received is that they are broken, that their value is something different than your value. Does that make sense? This is a, I wrote a bunch of blogs this week, about two blogs, about how the Christians are respond, you know, how we respond to uh, the LGBTQ community. And I talked a little bit about how this part plays in, that the identity itself is such a big part of the conversation. Listen, when, when you have a conversation with somebody that, that is, whether they're dealing with same-sex attraction or they completely embrace uh, their uh, lifestyle, we as Christians often, often just immediately go to choice, lifestyle, choice, lifestyle. And the reality is, is that for most people I've engaged and talked to, it is not necessarily a choice in lifestyle. It is an identity they've received. Why? And this is one of the reasons you hear words like, well, I was born that way. I was born that way. Why? Because what they have received explains the complexity of who they are and defines them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, where I'm going? That's one of the reasons that, that you have to understand the power that identity plays in all of our lives. Because once you have something that aligns and supports and explains and defines some of the complexities and things in your life... It becomes so powerful that regardless of all the identities that can be given to you, the most powerful identity is going to be the one that you receive. Because it's going to define you at your core. You're going to believe it's true. 